Having a plan in life is always good. Whether you're a Subway sandwich artist, a grumpy IT professional, or a marketing guy in front of the camera. Are you going to... That's why you have to hold all the strings, never lose track, and know how to intervene to ease a critical situation. Hello? Seriously? Look, Betty, if you don't feel like doing this... But you will not succeed spontaneously in mastering every critical situation if many people play a role in your risk scenario. Betty, can I just take it from here? Of course not. This is my monologue. Listen, geeks, the more cynical you are, the better your IT disaster plan will be. Conversely, if you think the universe is on your side, you're screwed. That goes for life as well. At least that's my advice to you. Now sit back and get some tips on creating a really good plan for all eventualities. Sean, you ready? Every IT admin has experienced bad days. The servers crashed, the last successful backup was during the Obama administration, and management is at the door asking when normal work can continue. Situations like this are unpleasant, but they're not the end of the world. However, what would you do if your server room was on fire or flooded? These are special problems, and as a wise old IT admin once told me, blessed be the admin who is in possession of a structured and well thought out IT contingency plan. Disaster scenarios. Figure out your possible disaster scenarios. And no, I don't mean the one where you realize you've left your lunchbox at home. I mean real disasters. Ask yourself what could possibly happen. List the possibilities, all of them. Possible threats include natural disasters, attacks, blackouts, and the zombie apocalypse. Always prepare for the zombie apocalypse. RTO, RPO, CPL, and RCT. Once you know what your potential disaster scenarios are, you can consider your needs for recovery. There are several important concepts here that will drive your decisions. Critical services. What are the most critical services for your business? These are the ones that will need to be restored first. Recovery time objective is the maximum time a service can be down for. Recovery point objective is the maximum amount of acceptable data loss. This will also help define your backup strategy. Capacity level. This is the required capacity level during recovery operations. For example, you might want to use some functionality during the recovery process, but you accept that the system will be at 20% capacity or that certain functionality might not work. Using these variables, you can work out the maximum amount of time your critical services can be down for. Infrastructure. These variables also influence your technical infrastructure. For example, if you decide your recovery time objective is very short, you might need a mirrored environment in a different geographic location that is ready to go the moment there is a disaster. Also, if you can't afford to lose much data, you will need more regular backups and therefore also more storage space for these backups. As you can see, your operational costs might go up to meet these demands, and that means you will need to decide how much risk you are willing to take. How? Use this formula to weigh up the costs of putting contingencies in place versus the cost and risk of the disaster actually happening. Recovery plan. Your recovery plan should focus on getting your most critical services up and running first. Obvos. The plan is a step-by-step -step guide of how you will recover your systems and how long the recovery will take for each disaster scenario. Communication chain and emergency contacts. A communication plan is part of a good recovery plan. In this step, Specify the people that need to be contacted in the case of an emergency and also the order in which they need to be notified. You should also make a list of the people you need to contact in specific scenarios, like when you need a management decision. Make sure the contact details are complete and always up to date and have at least a landline number, mobile number and email for each contact. Oh, and make sure all your contact lists and recovery plans are easily accessible in case your premises or all your systems are unavailable. This might mean storing them in the cloud or under a rock in your backyard. However you decide to do it, just don't leave them on a local hard drive somewhere on the first floor of your office building. Testing and continuous improvement. The best emergency plan is worthless without proper testing. You need to put your theoretical plans to the test quite regularly, maybe once a year. Test the recovery steps you've identified for the scenarios. Simulate getting your servers back online. This way, you'll have a proven step-by-step -step guide of how to recover from your disaster scenarios. After you've thought of everything that can go wrong, 
your good mood is often kaput. But you must keep that smile on your face, geeks. It's all in your outlook. I, for one, don't have a drinking problem. I have a drinking opportunity. Bottom line, enjoy your life, geeks, and subscribe to our channel. Cheers.